Hello, students. I'm getting ready to do our next section here on chapter six for individuals and families. And today we're going to spend some time looking at verbal following, exploring, and focusing skills. So these are all clear skills that you will need to learn to master as you do your work with um, clients. Uh, a huge part and has huge implications for interviewing. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Um, prior to that, just want to also remind you that always um, do the video lectures before class, uh, do your readings, and then come prepared to actually have some conversation. So without any further ado, maintaining psychological contact. What does this particular mean? So there are two aspects that we're going to look at today, and they would be your stimulus response congruence. And basically, this is the extent to which social workers response provide feedback to their clients that their messages are accurately received. So as you are having conversations with your client, it's about listening with a purpose, active listening, and really trying to understand what it is the client is actually saying. So it's this, this stimulus response congruence uh, will actually let the particular clients know that you as a social worker are actually receiving what it is they're saying. So giving feedback, and we'll talk more about that as we move further into the discussion today with some different techniques that will help you with that. Uh, also content relevance, the extent to which the content of the social worker's responses are perceived by the client as relevant or substantive to their concern. So basically what you are responding back to your clients, are, they are listening um, in some ways, the same way that you were listening to actually try to get the message to make sure it's accurate, but then how you then respond in terms of the context will actually help the client understand whether you're actually understanding what they are saying as well, what their actual concerns are. So there's, there's this piece and keeping that in mind that that's different, that's pretty much in essence what the psychological contact entails. So verbal following skills. So again, um, furthering, paraphrasing, reflection, closing questions, opening questions, seeking concreteness, and providing and maintaining focus and summarizing. So these are skills that you will employ in terms of your dialogue with your clients. Um, that really helps further expand and deepen the conversation that you're having so that you have a much, much better understanding of what the issues are from the client's perspective. And so these are techniques that help you actually clarify what the client is saying and what it is they're actually meaning. Um, so we'll go through these kind of one by one here as we move further into the presentation. So furthering. Um, minimal prompts. And so there are things that you can do uh, to actually prompt people to move forward to let them know that you're doing a good job. So one of the clear ones that we do a lot, sometimes without even being aware of it, is the nonverbal head nodding. So, you know, if people are saying things to me, um, I remember as a supervisor doing an interview for new social workers, and when I asked a question, if they were answering the question in the right manner, I would be nodding my head. So, you know, and I would just do that particular piece because it was a sign for them to say, yeah, you're on the right track, um, as opposed to that, as well as just kind of acknowledging what they're saying. And then your facial expressions. Uh, a lot of times we don't pay attention to what our facial expression looks like. So I would challenge you all to sometimes get in the mirror and look at what happens for your face when you are sad, mad, or having any type of emotion, because sometimes that shows on our face. Um, in terms of that. So we want to always make sure that we're aware that those are prompts. So how our face um, looks when we're receiving the information will either prompt people to move forward or not. Um, and then you can verbally tell people. I do this all the time. So say more about this or tell me more about, you know, the situation that's going on with you and your brother. Um, and then if they give me some information and, and I don't quite still understanding, I'll ask for either further clarification in terms of that. So um, this accent response is, client, I've really had it with the way my supervisor uh, has treated me is, or is treating me. So now 
we don't know what that means. So the social worker cleverly furthers the conversation by had it. So explain to me what had it means uh, by that process. So just something to keep in mind as you are engaging clients. Paraphrasing. So it's listening and restating the client's message in your own words. So here's kind of what I'm hearing you say, or here's what I thought I heard you say, and then repeating that piece back. Um, also focusing on the cognitive aspects of the message. So it just, so looking at this example here, where we've got um, this elder client uh, that is talking about um, wanting to, do not want to get into a living situation in which we wouldn't be able to make our own choice. And so what the social worker is hearing is what she kind of stated. So independence is a very important issue for you. So again, just kind of retaking what the client is saying and then kind of giving it back to them to, uh, which is a way to help the client also understand that you are actually actively involved and paying attention as well too. So paraphrasing is something you'll learn throughout the process. We'll probably practice some of these in class. Uh, simple reflection, uh, identify emotions expressed by the client. Uh, complex reflection means adding emphasis or to bring more in a more complex picture and then reframing, putting things in a different light. And there are different ways to do all of these. So the simple reflection is, you know, looking at what is the underlying feeling that's driving uh, the, the conversation or, or that I can pick up from the language. A complex reflection uh, might, revoid, might actually look at going a little deeper than just kind of a simple reflection. So, you know, I'm hearing you're angry at your mom uh, about the situation that occurred, but I'm also hearing that, you know, you love her and you care about her very much so it sounds like you may be somewhat ambiguous or confused about how you're feeling about your mom right now. So again, having to go a little bit deeper in terms of really doing some analysis of the information that we're hearing to really kind of get a sense of what is accurate for the client. And then reframing just puts it in a different light, you know. You know, um, I'm not good at anything uh, that I attempt to do. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just this loser. Well, you're sitting here and you're having a really fruitful conversation with me. So, you know, maybe there are some things that you're able to do. So it's again, it's about refocusing um, the information for that particular client. And then you got your closed and open-ended responses. And so in social work, we tend to always want to try to go with the open-ended responses. So being able to frame a question in a way that it's not a yes or no or a few words, that's an answer like, you know, what's your name? My name is Swansea. Here's my address. So these are closed-ended questions or demographic questions I might add as well, but they just kind of don't give the client the ability to kind of move on any further. So if there's other information they want to share with you, if they specifically just ask, stick to the question that you asked, then they'll just give you that particular answer where an open-ended question will be a little bit more expansive and it will allow the clients that opportunity to express how they're feeling about what's going on and what's relevant for them. So stick with those open-ended questions, get a lot of information that way. Seeking concreteness. So this basically is the response that facilitates specificity in the expression of a client. So a lot of times clients will say things to us or the families will share things with us um, about how they're seeing a situation and they will make the assumption that we know what it is they're talking about. Remember, families in different cultures communicate different in different ways. And so, you know, it would behoove us to really try to understand where that family is coming from. And so seeking concreteness might help us actually uh, be able to get an accurate picture of exactly what the client is saying in terms of, well, what are you meaning by that? Uh, and so checking out the perceptions, um, clarifying any vague or unfamiliar terms. So if someone is like, you know, I, I just really am, I just hate my mom because she's such, she's just an evil person. Well, I don't know what that means. I can hear that there's some frustration in your voice, uh, but can you clarify what you mean when you say your mom is an evil person? Can you give me some examples of what you're talking about? So I'm looking at trying to be concrete about exactly what this person is saying so I don't walk away with an assumption that may not be the correct one. Uh, explore based on the conclusions drawn by the client. So, you know, when clients have come to a place 
you know, really try to understand how they got there by backtracking that with them and having some conversations around that. Let's say specific feelings. Well, just tell me how you're feeling about that right now. I just, what's going on for you there? Uh, eliciting details of interactional behavior. So, you know, people will go um, sometimes, um, we just had a fight and it didn't work out. Well, tell me a little bit more about what happened with the fight, what led up to it, those kind of things. Let's kind of talk about uh, who did what and those kind of things. So I'm getting that concrete information, uh, focusing on the here and now, because a lot of times clients will want to kind of stay stuck in the past, especially if they've had issues with uh, these particular people in the past and they'll become more histrionic in terms of looking at it and they always, and they do, and it's like, nope, let's focus right here and now. Can't do a whole lot about what's happened last week, but we can really take a look at what we need to do as we move forward for this week. Um, so these are just some examples of what you can do in terms of being able to, to uh, actually seek some concreteness uh, when you're working with your clients. Um, so do that. Uh, focusing, um, making sure that, you know, once, once you've got a topic for exploration, uh, that you're exploring it in depth, that you're uh, asking these open-ended questions, you're seeking concreteness, and you're being empathetic in your responses. These are techniques that you are, are going to take you quite a ways as you are really uh, trying to work with your clients. Oftentimes, when clients have, you know, are meeting with someone and they've established a relationship, and so they're talking, they will bottle all of their problems into one huge mass, and then the conversation just kind of goes everywhere. And they're talking about this, and then they're switching to mom, and then they're talking about dad, and then the people at work are kind of annoying for them. And so focusing them is really about just kind of breaking it down and partializing, like, all right, let's kind of stick with mom here. Let's talk about what's happening with your relationship with mom. I know the other stuff is important to you in terms of the other relationships that you have, but right now, just so we can stay on track, let's really just focus all of our attention today on mom. We'll get to those other people at a later date. So again, it's around really kind of looking at focusing people to stay on point, on task, so that you, again, come away with a clear understanding about what's going on. Um, and so a lot of times you can blend those open-ended responses with, with being empathetic as well as having concrete responses as well too. And then, you know, managing the obstacles, um, intervening and helping clients really kind of stay on track because a lot of times they want to get to the finish line and there's a lot more work that needs to be done before we can actually go down that road. So focusing is a very important skill to keep in mind. Summarize. So I've met with this client now for the last 30 minutes. I have taken some notes. Uh, I have uh, made some mental notes for myself about some different things that I've heard uh, as I'm kind of be looking ready to get ready to do my case notes a little bit later. But as we're kind of getting ready to end our session, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize. So today we met, we were hanging out for about a half an hour here. And here are the things that you have identified uh, as being the things that are a need and the other problems that you have kind of focused on. So I heard you talk about X, Y, and then you wanted to also spend some attention on Z and Q. And so again, it's really summarizing the, the messages that you just heard. There's a couple of reasons to do this because what it does is it also helps the client understand that you are in fact listening because if you can regurgitate a whole conversation and wrap it up, uh, into a two minute synopsis. And I mean, you're hearing what I've got to say. And so there's a good chance that, uh, you know, clients will respond positively to that particular piece. Uh, and then it also provides some focus and some continuity. So based on this particular summary, these are the things that we're gonna look at doing for this coming week. Uh, and that's where we're gonna move in terms of that whole particular process as well. So summarizing, very important aspect of your interview and your work with the client so that, you know, again, it also helps as a point of clarification because if you miss something or you get something not quite right or the way the client intended it, they can stop you at this point. No, this is what I meant. So again, it's around that whole clarity piece again for you. Now, here's just a chart uh, that um, we would sometimes use in class when I would set up a, a role play uh, and have um, folks just kind of monitor how often people did these particular types of responses. So uh, something to think about. 
And so that kind of brings us to a close in terms of our uh, lesson for today. So again, uh, please do your chapter readings and then let's come to class and we will probably have some wonderful in-class activities where you get to practice these skills as well too. So I will see you in class.